G'day viewers, fellow gold refiners, gold lovers in general. Welcome back to my series of refining recovery without the use of nitric acid or with as little as possible used. I hope you are enjoying this series. Um, I'm trying to make as many as I can think of. Uh, in the comments, please leave me a uh, request if there's something that you want to see. I may already be in the process of making it or I may not have thought about it. Um, so let's carry on with another one from the series. Okay, so carrying on from part one, uh, I've finished doing the boards. Now it's time to filter both the wash water and the salt water. It's going to take quite a while. There's a lot of sediment in the bottom and in here as well. And my prediction is that most of it's copper. So I cannot see there'd be that much sediment if it was only gold. There's no way. With the amount of boards I had, it looked like a lot, but it's still not much. I, I keep saying in my videos that you need a lot of e-waste to make money. The only real place you get good money quickly is the BGA chips and IC chips and, and so on. But pins and boards and all that kind of thing, you need a lot of it. And yeah, I had quite a few boards, but it's still not going to stack up to a whole lot. So most of that sediment has to be copper. So it's going to take, I reckon, at least two or three days to filter. At the present moment, all my filters are being used. All my funnels are being used. Um, so as soon as I get one free, I'll start filtering. I'll filter the salt water first because I want to use that to drop some silver and then I'll do the wash water second and now the first part was about recovering the gold without nitric the second part I have two choices I could either dissolve everything into poor man's and have a really dirty solution I hate working with dirty solutions it's far better to work smarter and do more steps to have a clean solution than it is to have a dirty solution. So, in the second part, at this stage, my plan is to do a nitric bath. And that would dissolve any copper that's in there. Shouldn't need to use much nitric. In some of my videos in this series, I've had to use a little bit of nitric to dissolve whatever copper's there, and that should leave me with only the gold. I don't believe there's any silver on boards, not the ones I had anyway. Should only be gold and copper. So that's the plan at this stage, unless something changes, is to do a nitric bath, get rid of most of the sediment, should dissolve into solution, and then I will be able to refine the gold without having all the copper through there. So once I... Uh, get some funnels happening I'll come back the power supply incidentally which I uh, swapped out to that you saw me using at the end there is still going strong some people have thought that uh, from my comments that I go through a lot of power supplies uh, you got to remember that my computers that come to me and come to me for a reason half the time they're not working and it could be that the power supplies were no good to start with but the one I've been using, the last one, is still working fine. And it'll probably work quite fine for a little while more to go. Okay, so I'll come back when I'm doing some filtering. I've started filtering the salt water. And I'm pleasantly surprised because it's coming out crystal clear. I was worried that I would have to use a filter first. Then run it through some cotton balls in the funnel but that is really nice and clear there's going to be way more salt water there than what I need just to drop some silver but I don't waste anything so I'm going to go and get a bottle 
mark salt water written on it and store this maybe for the next time I do silver or the next time I do reverse electroplating um, when I start getting to the bottom there it might start getting dirty so all this part here which seems to be coming through nice and clean I'm going to store so I'll go and do that now some of you are probably wondering how can I use salt water most people would have known or heard of that you can use hydrochloric acid to drop silver but you can also use salt water and although hydrochloric acid is one of the cheapest of acids it's still expensive compared to salt water so why would I want to use an acid and, and for one some people don't want to use acids and two why would I want to spend money on an acid that I don't need to spend when I can just use salt water so I always try and think smart, work smart, save money where you can. It's hard enough to make a dollar with this hobby without wasting money on things you don't need to use. That's all the sediment that was in the salt water. So that big beaker was is empty now. And what I did was I took the wash water and I put that into the beaker and you can see that that's all settled out and there's some sediment down the bottom. So now I'm going to take out this funnel, this uh, filter. As you can see it's had a chance to drain properly until all the moisture has gone. That'll go into a beaker for a nitric bath. And I'll put another filter in there and filter this tomorrow. Alright, I've put both the filters into this clean beaker. It doesn't look clean because I've been handling it and the steam in there. I put it on a medium heat. I put some hydrochloric acid in there and some bleach to make poor man's, the proper poor man's aqua regia. And now I said I was going to do a nitric bath and I still believe that a nitric bath is the best way to go but since it's the last video in my series of no nitric used I prefer to stick to that Plus, I'll be using copper as anyway, which only drops the gold. So, it's not going to take any copper with it. I just like using a clean solution, but I can live with this one. So, I'll come back when there's more to show you. I'll just keep adding bleach as I need to, and when the reaction stops, I'll keep adding it. Until there's no more reaction. I've had this solution on all day. Um, it's been about 10 hours, 12 hours. I've put more bleach in twice and as you can see there's still a lot of fumes well, there was a lot of sediment that needed to be dissolved so it's uh, coming along quite nicely it's been on for two full days today is the third day I even left it on all night last night on purpose I checked it last night late and there was plenty of fluid in there and I only had it on low there was plenty of fumes, so I kept it going. Fumes are starting to die down now, so it's time for more bleach. Now, I've had a few people ask me what kind of bleach, what strength of bleach, and how much do I use? Well, I'm about to show you. It doesn't really matter about the strength. Obviously, the stronger the better, but this is just plain, boring, everyday old bleach from Aldi. So any normal household bleach will work. As far as how much, you just do little bits at a time or it could overflow because you get that sort of reaction. But I guess I end up putting about 50 mils, maybe 20 mils, I don't know, it doesn't really matter. Just put some more in there like that and then let it sit until the fumes stop. Put a plate on where you won't see the fumes because they build up in there. So there you go, just keep doing that. Hopefully, this is about the end of it because I'm keen, keen to get this finished. I know a lot of you are keen to see the results. So I hope that clears up some things for some people. Just uh, pour it in slowly but put in just a little bit. Just keep adding to it as you need to. Alrighty. Uh, I'm not seeing a whole lot of fumes so there's some in there. 
but this might be getting close to the end now. And I've given it a stir quite often, about two or three times a day I stir it up. So we'll see if this doesn't pick up in fumes and I know we're nearly finished. It's been half an hour since I uh, last put bleach in and zero fumes. So I'm going to turn it off. Actually, I'll leave it on for a little bit. I'll just take the plate off the top. What that's going to do is allow me to um, boil off the last of the, the bleach, get any chlorine gases and everything out of it. And then I'll turn it off in about half an hour or so. Let it cool down and filter it. If I see any sediment that's not dissolved in the filter, then I'll do another extraction and see if I can get anything out of it, but it should all be dissolved. Well, the solution has been filtered. It is now nice and clear and ready to put some copper airs into. As a general rule, as a general rule, I double the solution with copper airs. Um, not really a set amount of copper as itself is needed, it's just that you are supposed to double a gold solution content to dilute it. You normally double it with water, well copper as is mostly water. I had a large amount made up which I've used for several jobs. I wouldn't say it's doubled but it's close to it. I would have already had some dilution anyway from rinsing off the funnel and so on. So now it's just a waiting game, Let's see how much I get. Okay, so it's the next day. The gold's had a chance to settle. Pretty hard to see with copper as solution because it's dark. That's why I don't really like using it for that purpose. You can see there is sediment in the bottom. So what I'm going to do is pour off this uh, copper as solution. Now you always pour it into another vessel because small particles of gold may go across, especially when you're getting towards the end and in time it'll settle out in the bottom so you don't lose it I mean you could pour it straight into your stock pot but then you've got to wait a while to get it back so what I'll do is I'll try one handed to pour this off now for those of you playing at home when you get on an angle the gold at the bottom will start to slide down and it may stir up in the solution if you just hold it on the angle for a bit, once you get to that point where it starts to stir up, it will settle again, and then you can keep pouring. So, you can see at the moment where it's coming out, it's just all green. If you start seeing any dark matter, or if you see the colour change at all, then you know that you're going to be pouring off something, so that's going to stop. It's at this point down here that the gold would stir up. So you just pour slowly and the gold will settle and you can get pretty close right down to the gold that way. Anything that's light and stays in suspension generally would be silver or copper or something else. So I'm getting right down now to the, the, the bottom of it. So I'll pour, slow the pouring down a little bit. Now I'm starting to see sediment come out. So, there's not a lot of gold, but I didn't think there'd be much to start with. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put some water in there. Just tap water's fine. It'll dilute that colour. Hello? It'll be able to get rid of the copper as solution from the gold, so it'll clean it a little bit. I'm not going to do a full wash process. I'm just going to fill this up, and then I'll be able to see the gold a lot easier because it'll be a lighter colour. And then pour it off again, and then I'll dry it. As you can see, that's lightened it down quite a bit. And when I get to the bottom, once this is all settled, you'll definitely be able to see the gold. Now, I'm not expecting much in there. Um, I've said this a million times, but I'll keep saying it. The gold plating on boards is very, very thin, micro thin. And although I had a lot of boards, the amount of gold that would have been accumulated from each of those boards is tiny, minute. So, I really don't expect to get a whole lot. 
uh, any gold better than nothing so yes it's worth doing but don't go thinking you're going to be rich overnight uh, for new people who are starting out it's too easy to look at it and say oh look at all that gold and that's where they they make mistakes thinking they're going to make a lot of money and they don't just be patient and over quite a few different processes you will eventually get a decent amount of gold but not from one batch uh, it's hard for me to explain what I'm talking about but you'll, you'll get the drift of it there'll be a little bit of gold there and all the little bits of gold will eventually add up so I'll come back once that's settled I've poured the solution off now I'm dehydrating it to dry the gold but there's uh, a lot of stuff floating around in there I'm not quite sure what that's from must be from the circuit boards but that won't matter because when I dissolve the solution when I dissolve the gold when I'm refining it and then filter the gold solution that'll come out anyway so now I'm just drying it off and once it's dry I'll show you what we got I uh, poured it down into this little co container here so it'll be easier to scrape out when it's dry it would be too hard in that tall beaker, the tall form beaker. I can hardly get my hand in there, so this should be a lot easier. Won't take long now till it's dry. Okay, so the gold powder is dry. As you can see, it doesn't seem to matter what I dry it in, the gold powder sticks to it. I've got two 50ml beakers that have both got gold stuck to them, and now this dish. So that leads me to believe one of two things. Either it's the contaminants, or these other videos you see people have dried their gold in beakers and it comes to like perfectly clean, there's something dodgy going on. Because no matter what I do, it doesn't seem to help. Anyway, so time to weigh it up. two hands for this okay so now and like I did say there wouldn't be much there I don't know how many kilos of boards that I started with but there was a lot and I've got one gram so you know a gram of gold's good but considering how many boards I started with and the time it took to do it I wouldn't say it was a great turnout. That's just gold that's stuck in here and the two beakers, which I don't think it's gonna amount to much. So there you go, guys, a gram of gold. I hope you like watching this. And uh, it definitely was an easy way of getting gold. It's just not gonna be enough because there's not much on boards. Um, if you liked it, please subscribe. If you haven't already, please like it, share it, tell your friends about it all that sort of stuff and i'll see you on the next one thank you